What I'm going to do now is walk you through how we can set up a project for the Freedom Board for the K64F. What we're going to do is we're going to start by going up in a file, click on New, and we're going to choose a new Kinetis project. Once there, we can name this whatever we like. I'm going to call it K64F Free RTOS. I'm going to leave the default location. Then I'm going to go and click Next. Now, since this is a Freedom Board, we can have the option of actually selecting the board. As you can see, the Freedom K64F actually exists here. So we can go ahead and click on that. Then once we've found it, go ahead and click Next. We want to use Processor Expert for this example, so we're going to make sure that we check that. We're going to have a couple of options here. We want to just use the current perspective, and I always like to use it in standalone mode. At that point, we can go ahead and click Finish. Or if you wanted to, you could click Next. Next is just going to give us the options to select the compiler. Italic True Studio is based on GNU C compiler. So at that point, we're, our selection is correct and we just click Finish. Take a few moments and then the project will be created for us. All right, so once we give it a minute there, we can go ahead and we can expand our file system in the Project Explorer. As you can see, it did go through and generate quite a bit already for us. As you can see here, we've got our startup files, we have our linker file, and then we have our source materials. So at this point, if we were to go into main.c, we would find that there's not really a whole lot going on in here. Some low-level initializations inside of main, and then a call to eventually start an RTOS, which we haven't added into the project yet. So since we are playing with free RTOS, one of the things that we can do is we can go to the processor expert perspective here in, on the upper right-hand corner. Once I click on that, it's going to bring up a completely different perspective for me. If for some reason Processor Expert Perspective isn't showing, you can go ahead and click here, and then you can go through and find the Processor Expert panel, select it, and click OK. Then we'll add it to your tray there. Now, one of the things, as I mentioned, we want to add the free RTOS component. So what we're going to do is go up into our component library. We're going to search for free RTOS. Eventually, we're going to find that there are some options here. I'm using the free RTOS component from MCU on Eclipse. I found that this is a pretty uh, thorough plugin for free RTOS. I like it a lot better than the built-in one that comes with Processor Expert. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. If I double click it, what we're going to find is that it will be added to the project. I'm just going to click OK. And what you will find is that over time it's going to add in the components that it depends on. And in the left hand side here in our component view, we should see free RTOS being added to our project. At which point, I can go ahead and double click on it, and I can go in and configure my options within my target for how it's going to use free RTOS. Now, if we took a moment just to look through some of the options here, as you can see, if we wanted to, we could use the Kinetis SDK. Uh, we could specify that this is a custom port. If you wanted to use a system viewer to be able to view into how the real-time operating system is behaving, we do have a couple choices. Use either Sega, Sager's system viewer or to use Percipio's trace tool. Really easy to turn those on. You just go ahead and click uh, the start there. I don't actually want to enable this at that point, so I'm just going to cancel out. We can also go in here and configure our scheduler if we want. We can just verify our settings. It says set for a Cortex M4. Interrupt priority is a, fo uh, a 5. Uh, Sist tick is going to be our core clock as well, which is exactly what we want it to be. At this point, I can go through and I can generate code. In order to generate my code from processor expert, the first thing I like to do is just do a save the project and then come over to this icon here in my components viewer, generate processor expert code. I'm going to click that. It's going to then go generate my, my project code and get to a point where I can then compile and build my project. All right, so as you can see at this point, it would have generated my code. I can go back into the C++ perspective if I'd like. I can go ahead and say build all. And once it completes build, we can come in here and we can see what our baseline code looks like. We can see with free RTOS, we're using about 28 kilobytes worth of flash space. We have some data, some RAM being used. And this can be then used as our baseline as we start to add code, more tasks to see what, how the different tasks are affecting our code space inside of our application code. Now, we have added free RTOS, so we could deploy this into our, uh, into our target board if we wanted to. Unfortunately, at this point, what we would discover is that while FreeRTOS would run, it isn't really going to have a whole lot to actually do inside of our system. So at this point, what we really would like to do is add some task code to our application. To do that, we're just going to come into main, and we're going to create a couple of tasks. Now, 
the K64F Freedom Board does have on board a number of useful features. So it does have like a uh, tricolor LED, it has some accelerometers. Probably for a first test drive of a real-time operating system, what we're going to want to do is go in and generate a task for blinking some of the LEDs. So right here, I can go in and I can add some new code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a task. So I'm going to create a function, just like a, a plain old function normally would, to blink a blue LED. Now, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that when we are creating a task for a real-time operating system, every task is viewed like it's its own separate application. So just like if we were writing bare metal C code, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create an infinite loop to start with inside of our task. The behavior for any real-time operating system task that exits a task that completely runs through that isn't in an infinite loop is undefined behavior. So what we find is that if we were to allow a task to run to completion, we would want to add code in to be able to delete that task at the very end of its execution period. We never want to be able to just run the function once and then not delete the task. That has undefined behavior within the system itself. So we want to make sure that we do this. So we need to have some way to block um, the task. We don't want the task to continu continuously run forever. One of the useful features or functions within FreeRTest that we can use is VTask delay. And we can specify how long we want it to delay. Now in this case, I'm just going to call it um, some value x delay. And I can go at the top of my task and create a variable that will control that. Now, what there is a type within FreeRTOS called tick type, which is related to the system timer. So I'm going to create a tick type, and I'm going to make it my x delay variable. I want my LED to blink at a rate of about 500 milliseconds, or to toggle at 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to set that to 500. And then there's also another useful value that can be used called port tick period. MS, so this is the rate in milliseconds that the timer is executing at. If I say I would just want 500 milliseconds divided by that value, X delay will be the same value that needs to be passed into the VTask delay function to delay by 500 milliseconds. So at this point, I have a task that's going to run and it's going to execute at a rate of 500 milliseconds. Now, one of the things, as I mentioned, this is called a blue blink LED task which means we probably should be blinking an LED. Now, we haven't actually set up an LED yet within our processor expert. So at this point, what we're going to do, we're going to jump over back in the processor expert, and we're going to add an LED component. So I can go into my component library. I can clear out the filter here, and I'm going to look for LED instead. I should find that I have an LED component. I just double click LED, and that's going to create my component here in the lower left-hand side. So I can go ahead and I can click that. Now I can go in and actually configure it. So in here, if I go ahead and click this arrow, that's going to bring me into the LED component adjustment um, options. And then what I can do is I can look through here. I want to look for LED RGB, and I want to find blue. Now, on this particular part, PTB21 is going to be the blue pin. Um, it's nicely labeled within Processor Expert, so I can go ahead and click that. Now, LED RGB blue pin is going to be associated with my LED component. So at that point, I could, I can go ahead and do a save. And now I will be able to use LED1 to blink the LED. So I can go back into my C, C++ perspective, come into my code here, and I can say LED1 underscore on. And then this is going to turn my LED on. I'm going to want to delay for that period of time, and then I'm going to want to turn the LED off. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste my code and then change the LED1 to off. And now when I execute or actually create this task, what I should find is that every 500 milliseconds I'm going to turn the LED on, then I'm going to turn the LED off. Then I'm going to turn the LED on, and then I'm going to turn it back off again. Now one problem that we have here is that I have created my task, but I actually haven't told FreeRTOS that the task exists. So within my initialization code, I want to create the task itself. Now we can do this by in just simply going into our main function here. I want to add my, make sure that I add my code underneath these comment areas where it says I can add code. What you'll find is that if you put code comments, or if you add your code into areas of processor uh, into a module where processor expert could overwrite it if you regenerate your code, you could find that you'd spend a lot of time developing a function only to regenerate processor expert and it removes all of your code. 
So you gotta be very careful where you add in your own application code. Now we can use X task create to create our task. In this case, I'm just gonna call it uh, LED blue blink to match the function. So the, the first parameter that we're gonna pass into this function needs to be the function that should be called for this particular task when it's time for it to execute. I'm then going to provide it a, uh, a character name to be registered with uh, free RTOS. In this case, it's expected a constant character pointer, a constant pointer to a character constant. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type, perform a typecast here and I'm going to provide it with a name. So in this case, I'm just gonna say it's gonna be LED blue is going to be the name I wanna give this particular task. The next, the next uh, parameter here is going to be the size of the stack for my task. So in this case, I just wanna use the minimal stack size. In this case, this is generally set to a depth of about 200. Uh, now this isn't 200 bytes, this is a depth of 200 for its stack. So this means if, since we're on a, working on a 32 uh, bit microcontroller, we're actually going to have four bytes for every single depth of stack space. So quick math in your head, and you'll discover that we're essentially allocating about 800 bytes worth of stack space for this particular function to execute at this point in time. Probably a little bit overkill, but as we develop our application, we could go through and actually adjust this. Now the next couple parameters, uh, the next parameter we're not gonna be too worried about, uh, this, so we're just gonna put a zero there. The next one though is going to be where we actually enter in the priority of the task that we're interested in. I'm gonna set this as the highest priority task, just give it a one, and then once again, the last parameter we're not too concerned with. So if we go through and enter that in, now we have just created a task within free RTOS. If we were to go back, do a full build, once we've completed compiling our code, you can see we now have successfully compiled it. We have a task that we've created. We have code that's gonna run that should blink the LED on and off. At this point, we can go through and set up our debugger so that we can actually load this code onto the project. Now, one of the ways that we can do this, I can go to in the configure debug here. I have already preset up a uh, K64 free RTOS debug task. If you didn't have this already set up, you'd go and you'd click new. You could then come in, you could go into your debugger, select whichever debugger you're using. I'm using an external Sager J-Link, but if you're using OpenOCD or whatever your particular debugger would be, you could come in here, select it. In this case, as I mentioned, I'm using the Sager J-Link, so I'm gonna use that there. I'm using it in SWD mode, apply, and if I click debug, You can see here, I then get into my debug environment. I find that I'm in my first line in main, just like I normally would expect. And then if I go ahead and click run, what I discover is that my LED is actually blinking at about 500 milliseconds. And if you were to follow along, you would discover that you would have the exact same thing going on. So at this point, we have some very basic code that works as a great baseline for us to start developing and looking further at some of the different capabilities of free RTOS.